Welcome into Hitting Hard with John Chuckery here in Locked On Sports Atlanta. Today on the show, is it time to find a left guard? Competition isn't just a word. And what's double A got up his sleeve? It's all next. It's Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, Locked On Sports Atlanta. This is Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. Hidden Heart is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We ask you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. Get the latest episodes of Hidden Heart as soon as they become available. Check us out on the SiriusXM app and give me a follow on my personal Twitter page at JMCH316. So I I am a little bit concerned, and, and we literally talked about this, I believe, on Friday. And we talked a little bit about it yesterday from the idea of Matt Hennessy is out right now. And I don't know really what the prognosis is. It's going to be day to day. Um, The MRIs, I guess, were kind of negative. But this was something that was lingering from the end of last year. And Arthur Smith spoke briefly about it, but didn't get really into any detail per se. And now Matthew Bergeron is kind of in taking first team reps and you know, again, by all accounts, he's acclimating, but we have no idea what he's going to be. And I talked about this on the podcast. I, like I said, I believe it was yesterday or Friday or what have you, but I don't like the idea of Bergeron as having to go in because of injury, because of we don't have a better option. And, and that's really what Jalen Mayfield faced when their starting left tackle, sorry, their starting left guard got injured right before the start of the season. Mayfield was thrust into that position, and you know how it spiraled from there. So I know they have Kyle Hinton, which is not really much of an option when you think about it. I mean, that doesn't really give me anything to feel safe about or satisfied about or doesn't get me really uh, inspired, um, you know, Kyle Hinton. So I'm wondering if it's not time to take some of the cap space and while I want Justin Houston and Ngakwe or Ingram or somebody like that to rush the quarterback, I'm wondering if it isn't time to find themselves a left guard. And look, I understand. The big thing is, is that those guys don't grow on trees and they're just not readily available. But one of the things that the Falcons did right before they went into the 2016 season was make a trade for Andy Levitre to solidify their right guard position. And they found a way to make a trade. I think it was with the uh, um, uh, Titans that they made the trade with and brought him in and things worked out. And lo and behold, we're in the Super Bowl. Now, again, I'm not telling you that that we're going to the Super Bowl and lo and behold, we get a player in at guard and this, that, and the other. But what I'm talking about is finding a way to be creative and finding a way to make a move. This is where Terry Fontenot, Terry Fontenot, as we know, he's a guy that is really good at identifying pro player personnel, right? That, that he's a guy that more than his college, his specialty in uh, for the uh, New Orleans Saints was finding free agents or trade partners or whatever like that, guys that could come in and help their team. This is where Terry Fontenot has got to earn his money because I don't like the idea right now that Bergeron is our last best option and I don't think Kyle Hinton is necessarily a great option as well. So is it time to find a left guard? Is it time for Terry Fontenot to work some magic and come up with some kind of trade package or whatever? Because, again, those guys are not sitting out on the street. It's not like we're sitting around watching, you know, all these good guards or good interior uh, offensive linemen, and we just got our pick of the litter of these. I mean, these guys don't grow on trees, and they're valuable commodities. So you're going to probably have to do like you did in 16, an Andy Levitre type of trade to get this. And look, maybe Hennessy at the end of the day is going to be fine, and he'll be back at practice here very soon, and this and the other. I'm just concerned about monkeying around with our offensive line. And I'm concerned about not from Bergeron's talent perspective or what have you, but the idea that we're back to throwing guys in. And we're going to talk about competition here in just a little bit. But there's a difference between competition and outright winning a job 
and being forced into a job because there aren't better options. That's not competition. You know, just being the next man up, yeah, that's that's a great mentality, and and you know that's that's great to say and this, that, and the other. But when you have time and you have resources and you have the availability to do something about it, then that's not a great option. So I'm wondering if Terry Fontenot doesn't have to get on the horn and try to find himself one more interior offensive lineman somewhere. And I'm not saying that you're going to find, you know, again, a, a first ring. You're not, not going to find a Quentin level, a Quentin Nelson level type of player. I'm talking about somebody who can be serviceable somebody who maybe could be a cap casualty or what have you and is looking to get back a draft pick. I mean, that's again, what Terry Fontenot was paid for. That, that's that more than just signing X bears players. That's what Terry Fontenot was paid for to help fill in and plug in holes into the roster more than just guys that are bust. And, and really that's what Kyle Hinton is. I mean, I think Kyle Hinton's a seventh round, you know, draft pick or whatever like that. I mean, never done anything in the league. Rather than those kinds of guys, let's go find us somebody to help solidify that offensive line. Because again, there is expectations and there are things about this team that we expect to happen. And we certainly should be in the mix for winning a division, having a winning record, getting to the playoffs. Like all of those things are in the mix. And what you don't want is things to be derailed because we're forcing a rookie to have to go and play. Now, look, maybe Bergeron will be. John Hanna when all is said and done. Maybe he'll be one of the great offensive linemen in NFL history when we look back over the years and we say, gosh, you know, he's the best player that we've ever had in Falcons history. Whatever. Maybe that will happen, okay? But for now, but for now, the idea is we got to make sure that we don't get this thing off track. And while I like Bergeron, I think he's going to be able to handle the job, and I do think that, you know, again, he's a capable enough player he still hasn't played in the NFL. He still hasn't played left guard in the NFL. He still has the uh, inexperience. He still hasn't been thrown out there to the wolves. He's still standing beside Drew Dahlman, who is trying to learn on his own as it is, who's trying to figure things out on his own as it is. And, and again, I don't know how much you rely on Jake Matthews or what have you. You certainly rely on some of Jake Matthews. But when we start standing side by side with Drew Dahlman, that concerns me. That, that, that concerns me. And I don't want, you know, what happened a couple of years ago to happen for this team because we what we watched it, right? I mean, you know, all of the things that, you know, we thought were going to happen or this, that, and the other, and then all of a sudden Mayfield and Hennessy stood side by side and it was a season of nightmares and disasters. I promise you, Matt Ryan had nightmares and disasters about that season. So what I don't want to happen is from a couple of years ago. And, and when we talk about, you know, learning your lesson, you know, and, and learning from the past, this is one of those things where, okay, let's learn from the past and let's learn from what happened to us a couple of years ago, where we were forced into, for lack of a better term, we were forced into starting a guy who wasn't ready. And look, at least Bergeron is taking, you know, reps at left guard. Mayfield was still taking reps at tackle because of Caleb McGarry being out. But still, the the concept and the idea is the same. Let's not force anything to happen. Let's be proactive. Let let's find a way to fix something. I, and I don't know that it's broken, but it is damaged, and is it's got a little crack in it. May not be warped or you know completely you know torn apart, but it does have a little bit of a crack in it. So let's tape it up and fix it. Let's find a way to not let this thing become a, a you know a busted pipe when all is said and done let's be proactive and try to fix it now while we still can and by the way we have the resources we have the money we have the draft picks if we have all of that available to us let's go out and use some of those assets that are in our advantage and in our favor All right, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and obviously FanDuel is America's number one sports book. As you're betting on Major League Baseball here in the second half of the season, no better place to go than on FanDuel, where you can get 10 times your first bet in bonus bets. That's right, up to $200. So, for instance, bet 20 bucks, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets, whether you win or whether you lose. That's $200 you can spend on everything from betting on money lines to prop bets to who you think is going to hit the first home run, 
all of it on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. And the best part is when you win on FanDuel, you get paid instantly. So no better place to bet on Major League Baseball than America's number one sports book. FanDuel.com slash locked on is the place to go. FanDuel.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. FanDuel is the official partner of Major League Baseball. So one of the themes about Falcons training camp so far has been the idea of competition and, and, and and it's a lot of different things and it's more than just, just a word, you know, it is a mentality right now. You know, how many times are we seeing Clark Phillips and Drake London go head to head where they went against each other in college and now they're lining up in the pros and getting a chance to go after one another, right? We've seen B. John Robinson and Troy Anderson, where Troy Anderson got him the first time, and then B. John put a sick move on him and scored on him, right? We're seeing this competition level. And, and that's one of the benefits of young players. You know, I I remember, I, I distinctly remember something that years and years ago, we had on our, on our radio station, we had a, a, a an NBA basketball show, okay? And it was from whatever, eight to 10 on a Sunday night. Okay. It was late night on a Sunday. And the very first episode, Dominique Wilkins was in the studio. This was uh, Dennis Scott, Sam Mitchell, um, and Dominique Wilkins. And and I was down there just kind of hanging out with the guys. And Sam and I were doing a show together and just listening to Dominique and things like that. And Dominique talked about off air because they had asked him about why why aren't guys more excited about the dunk contest, right? Because this was a time when obviously the dunk contest, and again, it's been, it's gotten even worse now, but, but, you know, the dunk contest wasn't a thing and it wasn't something where guys were, you know, enamored to be part of the dunk contest. And Dominique Wilkins, they, they asked him, they said, like, well, why do you think that is? Why, why aren't guys more willing to be in the dunk contest, the the top players? And he says, you know why? Because guys don't want to find out who's best. Guys don't want to find out who's best. And that's the thing that I'm watching when I look at these young guys for the Atlanta Falcons is that they want to find out who's the best. And I give them a lot of credit and I give Arthur Smith a lot of credit for instilling that mindset into this team. You know, again, it's not old timey veterans that are locked and secure in their positions in life where they don't have to worry about things so much right? This is a lot of young competition and this is a young roster, right? Whether you're Kyle Pitts or whether you're Drake London or whether you're Clark Phillips, whatever you're standing in the community is, this is something that has been created to get some competition and get some fire underneath these guys. And, and I love it. I mean, I love the aspect of finding out who the best is. And again, we're not learning who the best is per se, because it's, it's practice and it's in shorts and T-shirts and all this, that, and the other. But what I'm talking about is the idea of creating that mentality and that concept of competition. It's more than just a word on this team. It's more than just, you know, hey, we're competing for the left guard spot or whatever like that. It's, it's about guys wanting to find out who's the best. It's about guys having a mentality. And, and that's one of the benefits of having young guys who – maybe aren't jaded, maybe don't know any better. Maybe they, maybe for lack of a better term, that they haven't made all of their money in the NFL, you know, that that, that there's not the fat cat syndrome or what have you to it. It's a lot of young, hungry guys and everybody trying to go out and prove themselves. Even the guys like B. John Robinson and Drake Lennon, Kyle Pitts, trying to prove their standing in the community. And then you have these young guys that are coming in, you know, as first and second year guys who are, coming in and taking it right to those guys and saying, wait a second, you know, Drake London may be a a high draft pick and I'm a fourth round draft pick, but I'm going to go in there and show him that I can play with him. I love that mentality. I I love that idea. And that's one of the things that Arthur Smith has been able to create around this training camp and create in this environment that everybody is competing for something, right? 
I mean, Desmond Ritter <clears throat> isn't lock, stock, and barrel secure in the idea of, yeah, we know he's going to be the number one quarterback, but if Taylor Heineke goes out there and balls himself out, and, and look, Heineke's said all the right things. I mean, he again, he says, I know my role. I know what I'm supposed to be. I know I'm the backup, this, that, and the other. But you don't think that Taylor Heineke in some ways has been told that multiple times for different franchises, and he thinks to himself, hmm, I can go out there and win this job. I can go out there and, and beat it. Now, again, the reality is that he's going to say the right things, and he's not here to be the starting quarterback. But you know that he's going to try to amp up his competition level. You know that he's going to try to find out if he's the better quarterback. And I got no problem with that. I got no problem whatsoever with the idea of competition and guys trying to find out who's the best out there. And that's why all of these one-on-ones that we're seeing, you know, is fun. Do they mean anything at the end of the day as far as, you know, is Bijan faster than Troy Anderson or this, that, and the other? No, I mean, that's not the guys are going to play against. And certainly it's not a game time situation or what have you. But I do like the idea of that we're getting a lot of this one-on-one kind of battling. And, and there's been some trash talking, right? I mean, Clark Phillips and Drake London have gone back and forth with one another, right? I mean, back to their college days and this, that, and the other. So it is good to see that. And it is fun to see all of that. And I think that that's healthy. I think that's one of the things that really is healthy, that everybody's fighting to be the best on this team, that everybody's fighting for their spot. No matter what you're standing in the community is, everybody's competing against one another. And I like it. Frankly, I, I like the idea of seeing that guys are competing against one another and trying to find out who's the best. Because again, at the end of the day, we want this football team to win as many games as humanly possible. We want them to be as successful as possible as an organization. And part of that is just getting that mindset right and figuring out a way to win games, figuring out a way to compete against one another. Because when you get out there, that guy's not looking at you to to you know be your friend or whatever like that. They're looking at you to that you're taking money off their table. You're taking food off their plates. And, and I like the fact that this competition has been healthy, and this is one of the big things that Arthur is preaching. It's not just a word. It's a mentality about this football team. All right, as you listen in to Hitting Hard, make sure you let us know on whatever podcast platform that you're listening to that you're an everyday listener to the program. So we like to call them our everyday or so. We thank you so much for being a part of our growing community and letting us know. So leave us a comment. Let us know that you're an everydayer, and we do thank you so much for being a part of the community. So what does Double A have up his sleeve? Well, you know, again, um, there have been all kinds of wild rumors and in, in innuendo. So it's been pretty, you know, low key as of right now. And again, we are headed toward the trade deadline. It's a little bit less than twelve hours away as I'm recording this. So I believe six o'clock, you know, is is the uh, the deadline uh, coming up uh, tonight. So, um, you know, there's been some wild rumors just as far as some players that have been attached to the Atlanta Braves. We saw Max Scherzer go to the Texas Rangers. Well, one name that's been attached to the Atlanta Braves is potentially Justin Verlander. Now, it's crazy to think about the idea of, uh, the, the just even the idea that Justin Verlander would be in the mix for the Atlanta Braves. Not saying that that isn't a deal that couldn't happen, but you know the concept of we were going to go into the season and have Justin Verlander be one of our starting pitchers um, halfway through the season or 60% or two thirds of the way, I guess now through the season was crazy to think about given what the standing in the community for the Mets was. Now the Mets are stinking it up and all of a sudden it's time to sell everybody off. So how that all work out for the New York mutts. So good for them that thank God that they having to sell everybody off because they stink so bad. But anyway, that's a separate side bar organization, the whole thing, you know, whatever like that. But I am curious to see what double A is going to do. I don't think he's going to sit on his laurels again. He has made a couple of moves to strengthen up the bullpen. I still think that there's a starting pitcher coming down the pike. Still think that there's a, another starter that's, that's going to be out there. And we've seen some of the guys that, you know, might've been in the mix as far as the Lance Lins and people like that and Giolitos and people like that, that are already moving around. But I wouldn't be surprised if double A adds, adds a starting pitcher to this rotation as we're waiting to see Max Fried get back where we think that he's going to be in Chicago over the weekend and possibly helping out the team quicker rather than later. 
you know, I still wouldn't be surprised if they don't grab a starting pitching that can eat up some innings for them and not have to worry about bullpen games and things like that. You know, as of right now, we're still, until we get Max Fried back, we're still kind of a couple of guys down in our rotation. It's still the big three. It's still Elder, Strider, and Morton that's carrying the load right now. And then we're figuring some things out as far as, you know, Yanni Shiranos or guys like that that don't really inspire me uh, at all. So I wouldn't be surprised if Double A's got a move or two up his sleeve for a starting pitcher. And again, if it is a Verlander, I mean, it's crazy to think about that idea. But listen, if Verlander can come in here and help us win games, more power to him. You know, again, I, I'm 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 a, I'm open to anything. I mean, I trust Double A. I trust what he's going to do, but I'm open to any idea because I don't want to think small. I want to think big. We've got the money. We've got the resources. We have the team, more importantly, is that we have a team that is ready to win now. We have a team that is a World Series contender. We have a team that is the best in baseball right now. And anywhere we can upgrade at any position, I'm all for so we'll see what Double A has up his sleeve. I don't know that they're getting a bat. <clears throat> I've talked about the idea of <clears throat> maybe a right-handed bat to kind of help out and, and be a, an outfielder. There's been rumors that Adam Duvall is um, on the block and could become available to come back to the Atlanta Braves. Okay. I mean, again, he's not going to hit you a whole lot, but He's got the power. He fits the profile for what they want to do. And obviously, he's still a very good defensive player. So maybe that there's a right-handed bat in the mix where you can kind of platoon with Eddie Rosario. You know, Rosario's had a nice year, and, and he's kind of real streaky, at, you know, at some points where he can carry a team for a while, but then he just fades into oblivion after a while. So I don't know if they're looking for another actual outfield bat. Starting pitching is certainly a possibility. More bullpen help. You know, again, they added a couple of arms from Texas and from Colorado. And and that Johnson kid has been pitching pretty regularly. So let's see what double A has up his sleeve. And and again, if it is a Verlander, I mean, look, we talk about giving up prospects or this or that. Okay, if we have to give up prospects, fine. Again, at some point, prospects don't really mean a whole lot. I'm trying to win at the big club. I'm not trying to build the best roster I can down in Gwinnett. We got all of these guys signed for a long term up here on the big club. We've got guys that are in long term contracts, Ronnie and Ozzy and Olson and Riley and Strider and this and that and Bob and Murphy and everybody. Like we've got all of our guys signed. It's not a matter of we're about to lose. You know, we're not about to lose a Freddie Freeman or a Dansby Swanson. We got our guys with us. The only guys we have to sign are just, you know, some pitchers, Max Freed being one of them, but pitchers and guys that are role players. We can find those guys. You know, again, we can find pieces to, to help come in here and do some things. But I'm going to be curious to see what Double A has up his sleeve. And if it is a Justin Verlander type of move, I love that. I, I love being bold. And certainly we have the club and the resources and everything that fits with going out and making a big time move and making a big, bold move. I don't want to paint with pastel colors. I want to paint with broad, bold colors because we're a World Series championship caliber team, and there's nothing that should hold us back, nothing that should slow us down from being, you know, legitimately in the World Series this year, and then we'll take care of things, you know, from there. So, again, I'm with Double A. I'm, I'm with him all the way. Um, obviously, he's the best GM in baseball right now, and if he wants to get bold – Let's get bold. If he wants to get crazy, let's get crazy. I'm all on board for whatever he's got going on, but let's see what he's got up his sleeve here by the time we get to 6 o'clock tonight. All right, well, thank you so much for making Hitting Hard your first listen. Be sure to go in and leave us a comment on whatever podcast platform that you listen on that you're an everyday listener to the program, as we call them our everydayers. We do thank you so much for being a part of our community. We ask you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you're listening to your podcast, you get the latest episodes of Hitting Hard as soon as they become available. Check us out on the SiriusXM app as well, and give me a follow on my personal Twitter page, at JMCH 
8316. Back with you tomorrow. This has been Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, Locked on Sports Atlanta. 